Hey, I'm Dave Kreisman, one of the writers and creators of the Mars Patel podcast. Uh, check it out when you can on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And you're listening to the PBR podcast. Hit it! What's up, everybody? PBR Podcast, Mike Palano, Derek D., Frankie, the producer, and sitting in a very special guest, a two-timer, but kind of a one-timer because that episode is no longer available. So it's like your first time on the show, <laughs> the one and only Mr. David Kreisman. Yay! Thank you. What's up, buddy? I thought hey. you could only have your first time once. You can only, well, you know, in podcasting, as you're starting to find out now, you could do whatever you want. That's true. Right? Through the mind. It's the first, the first two-timer. Um, thank you for coming back on the show. It's good to be here. What's uh, what's going on? We just we, you sat down and immediately we started firing through some stuff. You know what? You you're an Emmy award winning uh, writer and uh, all around intelligent human being, as I like to to think. Um, as I know, cause, uh, you know, sixty percent anyway, right? Yeah, you don't know much. Uh, <laughs> what is your opinion? I think I want to cut out the intro music, guys. What in general? Yeah, like we sit down, like I, I you know. I think I'm going to do it in post from, from now on. What do you think? No intro music at all? Well, no, I'll plug it in later. Oh. I feel like we already started the flow in a conversation, and we have to like cut it off for, for uh, you know, incidentals. Oh, you mean like not, not, cut out, com- not cut out when people listen to it, just cut out right here. I'll put it in. I'll put it in. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Right? Yeah. You I feel that, like... S- that Marin thing where you're just talking, and then people suddenly 10 minutes in go, are we recording this? Yeah. 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 Right? I see that. I, I feel like sometimes it breaks it up. Sometimes, on the other hand, though, I feel like it makes the guests feel comfortable. The music? Sometimes. What I don't your- know. I think the music starts, and then suddenly you sort of sit up straight in your chair, and you feel like, oh, oh, here we go. So it does kind you, of change the mood a little or bit. Or it does yeah. both. No, it, it either does. does that, or it, it... Was that Dennis? He's barking. De- yeah. Sometimes Dennis sounds like a yeah, dog. Dennis, Dennis sounds like a intern. Dog. Yeah, but some, it, I feel like it's either... It gets people... You know, maybe a little nervous right away, or it's like, okay, now it's starting. Now right. I'm on. Yeah, right. Thing. Which so is I guess it, you can look at it either way. Which could be a negative. Could be, but for a guy like David, I don't think that's negative. I think you know he's it knows what's going on. I like to have theme music when I walk into a room. Usually. Yeah, that'd be great. If you had theme music, what would playing it be? Bo- yes, what would your theme music be? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I mean, the first thing that popped in my head was Hava Nagila, unfortunately. Hava Nagila. No, no, I think what? no, I think Real American, the old Hulk Hogan theme song. Oh, all right. works. That's all a good one. What would yours be? Yeah. I you know my first one that I go to would be Shaft and I don't think that's really accurate anymore <laughs> as I'm getting older so maybe I don't know. You think it was appropriate when you were younger? <laughs> yeah. I felt like, you know, I was a black private dick that was a sex machine to all the chicks. I don't know. I I've, I I That's what I pointed at you cuz that's <laughs> where you're supposed all. to go. Maybe not all. not all the chicks. <laughs> Just some of them? Yeah. I don't I, I think uh we jeez Dennis. Dennis, stop barking. Frankie, did you feed Dennis? Yeah. <laughs> Does Dennis have to go out? Yeah, he might have to. Uh I don't know. I'd probably go with um Return of the Mac. <laughs> return of the oh. Mac. Once again, return. This or uh, You're the Best from Karate Kid. What? <laughs> you're the best. Around. Which, around. One's, which one's more arrogant? <laughs> or, or, so which one's more <laughs> like self-centered? Uh, I think I would go with uh, <laughs> You're the Best Around, my, probably. My second one-man show, I entered to Return of the Mac. I, I actually really dig. <laughs> that's a great that song. song. That's not like a. Wa- I guess that is a walking song. Like That's a, that's a nice like stroll down Pace, the street kind of song. Like swaggy song. A real American is like, by the end of that, though, you want to, like, fight people. Exactly. <laughs> right? You want to take on terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's going on, man? Let me just catch um, Let me catch the listeners, the PBR Posse, up. Um, you, I, I don't want to go through all, you, correct me where I'm wrong, but I don't want to go through all of your, your background uh, to, um, to embarrass you at all, but, like, you, you know, Emmy Award winner. Guiding, Award. Guiding Light? As, Guiding Light. Guiding Light. What, yep. You wrote on a couple other shows? I was the head writer of Guiding Light, As World Turns, All My Children. All at the same time? No, no, different. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> holy shit. Yeah, exactly. Just writing Jeez. on that. Exactly. Don, isn't that, is that a lot of writing? Do you, I mean, wouldn't Dave be good in your, uh, not at your POTUS? Wouldn't uh, it be good to be in your cabinet, maybe? I gotta tell you, he'd be great. Okay, first off, I'd make him my, you know what? Forget Pence. He's my vice president. Okay? This is gonna be a soap <laughs> Oh, Pence is out! He's out. Get rid of him. He's the worst. We'll put him over there. He'll just block the wall. <laughs> he'll be at the, be at the, the wall of pens. The wall. It's a wall of pens. It'll be great. It'll be fantastic. Would you let Dave write your tweets? Absolutely. Dave, you can write my tweets because right now, that. not doing a great job. I used to write Vince McMahon's tweets, so I'm kind of ready for the job. Oh, and you probably, and, and, and that's now right. And Linda's in the cabinet. That's right. How do you feel yeah. about that, man? Well, in some ways, she's probably the most qualified person that he's hired so far. Yeah. At least she's, you know. 
I mean, it's they're they're buddies. And he was I mean, involved with the WWE. He was. I mean, I was. It was great. He I shaved Vince's head. I mean, he's right here. You can just ask him. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, he's yeah. a member of the WWE Hall of Fame. That's it's great, right? POTUS. Me and Hall my hair. Fame. Okay, my hair. I did it. My, my my finishing move. It was the it was the comb over. Okay, what I would do is put my hair over over your eyes, and you wouldn't see, and you'd one two three count. <laughs> This is what we have to deal with on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you let him out of the cage, and you, sometimes Sorry, you just can't hey, get him back in. Hey, I don't know. Hey. So you, uh, speaking of WWE, you, uh, you wrote for them. Uh, I was the head writer there for about a year. Which I love that lineage, and we talked about before, this after, 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 after soaps, after soaps, which makes yeah. perfect sense. Perfect it's sense. a soap. It's a soap with violence. Yeah. Not, yeah. Should I? Should I, violence the wrong term? Uh, violence is okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's action <laughs> packed. They were looking for. They wanted someone who had soap opera experience and also knew wrestling. And I oh, think I was the go. only person in the entire world that fit that bill. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were a good wrestler. You were uh, all state in uh, high school. I was good. Wrestling? I wrestled in college, college yeah, as well. Virginia, yeah. Wait a second. Let's take a step back. How do you become a head writer to for a soap opera? Uh, well, I got a I got a job at a soap opera out of college as a kind of assistant producer, and just started writing sample scripts and sticking them on the door. And I got on staff, and then worked my way up, become mm -hmm. a head writer. Nice. Yeah, pitching stories and stuff. And then you jumped from Guiding Light to... Yeah, well, I, after, I killed off Guiding Light after... It was on uh, for 72 years, and I was the final head writer. <laughs> <laughs> Very proud of that. <laughs> Not anyone can kill a 72-year-old show. It That's started great. on the radio. Uh, and then I went to As World Turns, and that was also canceled, and then All My Children was also canceled. So I don't say it's my fault, but it wasn't not my fault. <laughs> hey, you won an Emmy. I mean, uh, right. you, you were exactly. doing something good. Yeah. Which one did you win the Emmy for? For Guiding Light. Guiding Light. And when you were on WWE, you wrote to the first sum SummerSlam. Oh, wait, didn't you have? You wrote to the first something, right? Or or we, the light. did you kill SummerSlam too? No, That's I did not. Going, SummerSlam right? is still That's there. Still WWE is still there. Yes. Uh, That's yeah. like their Super Bowl. Uh, well, WrestleMania is their Super Bowl, okay. and then SummerSlam is kind of the secondary one. I stopped in like the '80s. You know what I mean? I'm still JYD and, and Coco Beware. Like. Yeah, I hadn't <laughs> watched in a long time before I got the job, and then now I'm kind of back in it. My kids are watching these days. But you don't work for you don't do anything work wise with no, not movie. anymore. Yeah. No. Uh, Frankie Edgar was in that chair last week. I had I asked him the question. You brought up wrestling. I have to ask you if you had to choose between one or the other. You're either gonna, <laughs> you're you're uh, you're you're going to tap out. Or you're gonna check the oil. Which yeah. one? Are you, which one are you doing? Oh, tap out. <laughs> definitely. Okay. Yeah, see, yeah. Uh, definitely. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> his answer was priceless. Yeah, it really priceless. was. Um, so, all right. So we've kind of come full circle. Um, you are now, since we've last seen you, dabbing into podcasts. Yeah, yeah. We uh, created a show called uh, "The Unexplainable Disappearance of Mars Patel," which is a uh, it's a podcast for kids. And it's um, scripted, almost like an old radio serial, um, but, you know, with new technology. But it's all the, you know, it's a, it's a, it was a 10-episode season. Uh, each episode was about 15 minutes or so. And uh, it's been oh, great. it's quick. Yeah. It's pretty, fairly quick. Yeah. It's good for kids. It's about, you know, two to three hours for kind of the whole season. And it all, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, each episode doesn't stand alone. It kind of keeps going. It keeps going, going right. Yeah. yeah. We sort of called it like Stranger Things for kids. That's kind of the feeling of it. Oh, nice. Um, it's great. And, and we're now, um, we've got four more shows in development, and we've kind of re really built this whole company that's going to produce podcasts for kids. All in the podcast awesome. realm? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the hope is that eventually some of these will sell as TV shows and movies, but... Well, I, I dig what you did on the beginning. The first episode of, of this um, series is video. And you kind of, you kind of like, instead of having this, the child having to like draw the the picture of this person by themselves, you gave it to them. Yeah, like they we know did, exactly what they look like. Yeah, we did sort of a video trailer for yeah. it because we figured that that would sort of hook people. You know, kids who don't really know what podcasts are, there aren't a lot of podcasts out there for kids. And that's what we discovered. And as a parent, I realized there, there wasn't a lot of stuff, especially good scripted stuff, quality, um, that parents could listen to too in the car. And so uh, so that's what we got into. I mean, it's pretty crazy. It's, it's old time radio. It's like sitting around the fireplace with the radio on yeah. in the 40s. Right, it's yeah. what you're what you're bringing back. Yeah, and and really high production values. One of my partners is a musician, and he wrote uh, all this great original music for it, and all the sound effects are great. Like it really feels like a full. It's like watching TV just with your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. now, what? Go ahead. Do, do you? Is it the same group of kids that are cast, or is it different? Each it, it'll be different for each show. Like yeah. This we're we're uh, starting to produce season two of of Mars Patel, so we're gonna have those kids, and we're now casting for more. Uh, we went through casting agents. They're all professional actors, and you know, we pay them a little bit of money. 
and they're great. So are you backed? Did you have backing right away? Did you sell the idea or did you kind of just produce it yourself? No, we produced it ourselves. Right we funded on. it. But now we're in the process of getting funding. We've, we've gotten funding for season two and, and for some shows going forward, too. What, what kind of people? Like, are you doing in-place advertising? No, we're, we're working with a network. We're, we're in the process of, of signing a deal with a, with a podcast network. All right. Like a multi-channel podcast network? Kind yeah, of yep. yeah, yeah. I think I can't really announce it yet, but we're probably two days away from the deal going through. That's great. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of like... You know, we've been in the game for like what four four years now or so, and I'm trying to think of like where those what those networks are. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's Wondery, and there's yeah. Panoply, yeah. Um, and there, and a few others like that. Gimlet, and they're just they're just producing they're they're housing productions for podcasts, yeah. original content. I've yeah. heard of I've heard of none of you know none of these. Really, I guess it doesn't really fall into our our genre. You know what I mean? It's yeah. more storytelling or they have a lot of regular. You know the. Um, there's ones that have uh, NPR style podcasts too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, people we were talking to have they have a science podcast and they have a, they have sports podcasts and things like that. Um, mostly stuff that they produce in house, but they're just starting to get into you know scripted narrative shows, which is great. It's kind of it's a new frontier. What was the name of the show I was on um, back in the day? I was a guest. Uh, there was a guy who was doing I, I can't remember if he, he closed Midnight I was, Blue. No, I was on the last episode. And um, yeah, I can't remember, but he did. He did the greatest episodes. He would go around and he would find podcasts, and then he would contact them, and he'd take like a person from each podcast, give them a part. Oh, right. I he would email it to oh, them. Yeah. You'd read the part, and then you would record it on your own and send it back to him, and then he would cut it together with all the folly noises and all the music beds and all the effects into it. Oh, really? It. And he and he would narrate the story, and it was it was awesome. It was cool. so highly produced, and I can't remember. It'll it'll come to me. Eventually. It's also clever. It's also very clever. Very clever. You know? And he shut it down. He's like he's like this is it's going really well. But he's like the work behind this is it's enormous. As you lot. can see, like it's a lot. The editing is it, it takes forever. It takes forever. Yeah, and if you're a one and you have, I guess you have a team with you, right? If you're one person putting that all together, it's got to be a lot. And you said it's only. I mean, it's a 15 minute episode. So can you imagine if it was yeah, half it hour or something? It'd be so long. I think we figured out that it's it's something like I don't know 75 hours of editing time for for uh, for like three episodes. I forgot exactly what it was, wow. but it's, it's a crazy amount. Yeah, and especially because we got we we made the choice to use real kids. You know, there's a lot of you know you've watched animation stuff. They use a lot of adults as kids, and the performances are a little better. But we thought for the charm factor. We wanted real kids, and so they're good, but they're kids, yeah. and so you kind of have to help them with their with acting and. What age them. range are they at, too? They're, yeah, they're so they're between ten and thirteen. Yeah, and then you got that thing where it's they're kids, which is anytime you cast kids, you gotta there's all kinds of rules you gotta. Yes, you know, that's so right. That's a whole thing too. Yeah, but it's fun. <laughs> it's fun working with them. And it's they, gotta be four and hours and take a break. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Did you say they record in isolation? Like, they're, they're, are they all there together? They're all there together. Oh, so are, we okay. tried it. Yeah, we tried it to record the scenes like they're doing a play. Like okay. Yeah, and they're kind of in isolation booths so they can see each other oh. and hear each other on the on their headphones. Um, but then it's easier for us to cut up mm -hmm. in case they talk over each other. Are they reading the script directly right there? They're reading the script directly there. So we that, do a little, a little rehearsal, but for the most part, we're kind of doing it on wow. the fly. So you're that's big. You're you got multi-tracking that. Yeah, yeah, and we recorded. So we recorded the ten episodes over. Uh, we did three days of recording, um, and it was for the whole uh, season. long days for the whole season. Yeah, then yeah. a lot of it comes in post all the time you're putting in. Yes, exactly. I feel, but I feel like, you know, with kids reading, for them to read and make it sound like they're just talking, obviously that takes some coaching and yeah, rehearsal because that that's a even for adults that don't. That's you know, definitely true. Yeah, yeah, we found some great kids. They're really good actors. How many all together? We had uh, five principals, and then we ended up with, you know, we probably have 15 characters all together. So you cast so. 15 kids, different kids. Yeah, I mean, some of them are, like, my kids do little small She's roles. Yeah. I've got right? my, my son and daughter are in it, yeah. And, uh, you know, for little roles, we, we do a couple of our, um, ourselves, and we pull people, we, friends that we have. You know, a, a lot of times we get in the editing room and we go, it would be great to have, like, one extra line here where the guard says something. Like, okay, I'll be the guard. Yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of... I mean, because it's all sound, so you got to go to the sound effects. Like, are you making your own sound effects? You're like, oh, we're gonna bang on a table. We ha table. Yeah, we do a little of that. Yeah. And we and we also subscribe to a uh, like a sound effects yeah. um, 
you know, you get a subscription to it and it has thousands and thousands of sound mm-hmm. effects. You just type it in the Yeah, which up. is actually my favorite thing. I love, like, we go, we're trying to figure out what's the word that's going to give us the right sound. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Is it groan or grunt? <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, no, we yeah. found one the other day. It was supposed to be a kid who was, like, fighting a monster. And we found it was women wrestling was the, was what was the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the mo- name of it. Most of the time, <laughs> it's not even related to what you want, no, you know? No, It's Yeah, it's like we want a drone. We were trying to try and find a drone, but what a drone sounds like is not that scary. If you want a scary drone, you need like a hair dryer, yeah. or you need. You know, I think what we end up doing was um, one of my friends found remembered that in an old episode of the Six Million Dollar Man, they had a really scary drone, and so he just he just pulled it from YouTube, and we ended up using that one. It was really, like, worked perfectly. There's a great um, on the back end of Troy on the director's cut of Troy. There's a uh, making of, and there's a whole section of folly noises, and, oh, yeah. and there's they, they have the guy who did the fo- uh, folly noises for. Troy, and he's in his studio, and he's like this insane guy. And it, the room is amazing. It's like a, just a projection screen, so he's watching the film, and then it's just got shit everywhere. It's a yard sale. You yeah. know what I mean? He's got everything everywhere, and he's got these awesome microphones all set up, and he's on his knees watching the movie, and it's like there's this one scene where uh, flaming balls of mass just roll down the hill, and, are, and they're like filled with oil, and they're like rolling over the soldiers and lighting them on fire. And this guy is like in front of the microphone with a match. And he's like, you know, it's all proximity. Like, flame is flame. And yeah. if you're close to the mic, it sounds yeah. like this huge ball of flame. And then he's... And uh, then in post, you could adjust it. And then he's like, he's just crunching his knuckles into, like, uh, wicker <laughs> baskets to make the sound of the rolling head. And he's, like, looking up at the screen. It's one of the... He's, it's, he looks so happy in his job. It seems you know? like a really fun job. But that is actually probably very hard. Like, what now you're like, what object random object can I use yeah. to create this sound? Yes. You know, it's like, you know, put something on your feet and walk on like, you know, scissors can make a certain sound <laughs> that That's right. you need. You never know. Um, 88% of the listeners said video. We, we as, you, as you know, we, we, we were big into video, but we cut back. Mm-hmm. Um, 88%. That's a that's a big percentage. It's a big percentage. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that's a chunk. I hate to I hate to like really disappoint eighty eight percent of our fan base, but sorry. Well, we'll 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 revisit it, right? Why did you ask the question? Yeah, exactly. I was curious because f- first of all, clearly, if you if it's a numbers game and you look at our downloads via you get false audio, their the numbers are huge. If you you don't get false, they're hope. huge, right? They're huge. <laughs> They're You're very off tonight. I'm, I'm trying to cue. Twice I've cued you. You could say the word huge without asking Donald. No, nah, it's, it's just not the same. And then <laughs> if you look at our video views, it's very, um, it's low. But yeah, 88% of the people answered yes. So they like the idea of looking at you, but they don't actually like looking at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, maybe you're just maybe because YouTube. Maybe we just upload it to Facebook. Well, I like what he did, and he put the video on iTunes. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we... Oh, you could do that now? Well, he did it. One of the things... I I didn't think you could, right? I thought it was separate of video versus... You can, yeah. And one of the things we learned was, you know, you guys probably already know this, but when you're looking to get as many downloads as possible, the Mm -hmm. more episodes you put on, especially in the beginning, the more you get. So, you know, we were like, what else can we put on with the first episode so that every person that subscribes immediately is counted as four downloads? So we had, you know, the video trailer and an audio trailer and the first episode, which, you know, so kind of like tripled our numbers right off the bat. But yeah, but you. How long has it been up? Um, a little less than three months. Yeah, so I wanted to kind of pick your brain on how you advertise because you're you, just the fact that you have sixty eight. Last time I looked, you had sixty eight reviews, all five star. Yeah, w- well deserved. All real. None of those are people we know. Which is huge. Like we've been on for <laughs> like our listeners do not like we have a good Wait, listenership, but, but okay. we do not have. They don't leave reviews. Yeah. So like the fact that you got that. Oh, we, I mean, we, we definitely begged people to write reviews. There's no doubt about that. Oh, you but were being you facetious. Ha- and yeah, I, I was kidding. It. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, I, we definitely, <laughs> there might be some people you recognize in there. I what saw you, you looking at him. Uh, Derek, yeah. I'm just going to cut you off for the rest of the episode. Yeah. I saw you looking at him, but I thought. <laughs> I know you were like. I yeah, thought she no, was I, judging. Doing the, no, I. Yeah, no, there's, there, are, there are plenty that are real, but there are a few that maybe are not. But, um, but we did, we definitely put out, uh, when we, when we launched, we did uh, a lot of just kind of a social media push to sort of ask mm-hmm. a lot of people to listen right away and well, to that, share it yeah. and to uh, and that helped a lot. That was going to be my question. What social media are you using or have you found to be the most useful for this show with with an audience of kids yeah. and or parents, I guess, we with, with middle pa- age. Yeah, we went to parents. We, we really went to parents first because um, – you know, the kids who are 11 and 12 have their own phones, and they're, but even they are not really listening to podcasts very much. So we were really aiming at the parents who listen to podcasts and think, you know, I wish there was something that my kids could listen to. It's a very, very tricky medium. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, 
And there, and what video do you do you upload? Like, which is like a behind the scenes or something? No, it was it's a, trailer. a trailer. Yeah, like a video trailer. Oh, oh I thought just, you just like you were here for trailer. the whole interview. Did you hear? The <laughs> I thought he meant audio trailer. Yeah. No, he like literally shows the girl and everything. He shows her friends and it's yeah. a nice drone drone. I'm assuming it's a drone, it's shot. drone shot. Thanks yeah. for thanks for calling. You know, you know. Thanks for calling. You're like Derek. <laughs> no one ever calls. We use a. I mean, we use a teenager in our block. To, yeah, I figured. Do the drone show. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I crashed mine. He anyway. works really cheap. <laughs> yeah, you did crash yours. I did crash it. It's a sad. You can't even fly, dude. I got a call the other day. Did I tell this already? I don't know. I got a call from um, Discovery Channel. Yeah. From oh, the, you did, did I tell it? You I think it's yeah. <sighs> Three months in Turks and Caicos, drone operator. That Are you available? Like, Absolutely. That sounds like a Do you pick. have all of the new certifications? No. Okay. Sorry. Next. Uh, what a job. They just changed all of the laws for the drones. Really? Yeah. Speaking of drones, just out when I was just out in LA shooting the Ford thing, they, this guy, th- it was a team that flew this drone. They had a, they had two drones. Yeah. He had the one drone that still shot beautiful 4K and everything, but that was the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, he, uh, the scout drone, like if because the winds were crazy up there in the in the, mm-hmm. in the, in the mountains, and and in, in, it's called Angeles Forest. But uh, they set up the test drone, which was probably like thousands and thousands of dollars. And then they just set up, then they sent up the main drone, but they only kind of hovered it as I was going. We were going through the windy roads. So but you had amazing. was there two operators on one drone? Because they're yeah yeah that's the that's the um, that's the DJI. Um, Oh my God! What I mean, inspire. it was like it's called the it had a, black uh, Ari? and the legs. Ripped Ari, oh, camera, yeah. Ar- what's that? Yeah, there, yeah, like that, a red. Yeah, it was like one of those on there. Mm-hmm. But it was. I said, wait a second. You have a drone. You have a just in case drone that still shoots 4K. That is yeah, like it was probably a Phantom or something like that. It, but the the Inspire, you can have you have two operators. You have a, a drone operator and a camera operator. It wasn't like the to- white two Phantom. totally different. No, yeah, I'm saying it's the, yeah. The Inspire is totally different. It's I, the Inspire actually has. The Osmo camera on it. We're totally. We just lost thirty percent of our. Well, I'm just saying. I, you're talking about drones, and I right? was just Dave like, left. He's not even here anymore. <laughs> what? Did you Sorry, drone? I was just fascinated by that whole thing that he had a scout drone that probably cost ten G's. <laughs> it's like insane. <laughs> so season two, yeah, coming at you. Yeah, season two coming at you, and and hopefully at least uh, maybe three or four more shows by the end of the year. That's that's the goal. Um, can you tell us about those or the, what are the yeah, top, I mean, con, you know, content? Yeah, it's all going to be aimed at kind of the, the middle graders, which is 8 to 12-year-olds. Um, and we have one that we're going to try that's, that's kind of YA. It's a little bit more for teenagers. So we're going to give that a shot too. Um, and they're all kind of high concept stuff. YA, you know, young adult? Young adult. Got, got it. it. Exactly right. Can you please, yes. Yes. please <laughs> oh, right. bring back Nutritional Mad Men? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> he belongs in a podcast. That would be a perfect podcast. <laughs> right? Yes. Christensen's got to be somewhere. You definitely have his phone number in your phone. I think I probably do. There was, a, there was a clip going around on Facebook maybe a month ago of him peering on an episode of, um, I think it was iCarly. Yeah. Did you see that? I saw something pop up. Yeah. Uh, are you still friendly? I talk to him every now and then, but not, not very much. We, we should do a tiny bit of backstory. Uh, Dave and I went to, high, as well as, as Frankie, we all went to high school together. And Dave was the, um, we had a TV show at the high school that aired all the time. And Dave was the head well, writer and, and face of it, I guess. And you started, you really are the one who broke out from, it was always like a news show. And you broke it out into like scripted. And you created a character called Nutritional Madman. Yeah. So, yeah, a friend of mine named Ryan Christensen was an obsessive nutritional guy. And first in he came high school? on in high school. That's yeah. rare. Yeah, it was, really, now, it was really weird then. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? He was just you obsessive he was, in general. He was way ahead of his time. He was a w- way ahead of his time and, and, and really intense. <laughs> and so he came on kind of just as a guest one time on this sort of interview show. But we did a bit where he would get madder and madder and madder at the questions I was a- asking him. And eventually I would sort of take out a Slim Jim and eat it. And he would lose his mind and just beat the crap out of me on the set. <laughs> but because the show had never done anything like that, it was always just kind of straight interviews. It was like people went crazy because they weren't expecting it. And next thing you know, like he was slamming my head into the camera and beating me over the head with chairs. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he and, blows up the Easter Bunny at some point. Yes. Well, it? then, so then, so we, that was the first one, and everybody loved it. So then, it, it started getting increasingly more violent and crazy. And the um, school was like, "Okay, I don't remember if they." Really you know, cared, at one man. point, they somebody said something to us, and I mean, there's not a chance in the world that any of this stuff would. I mean, we had you know 
gun chases through yeah. schools. Like he was, he became the Terminator <laughs> robot it's and he's shooting at me. Do you imagine? Yeah, I mean, the, we brought all this weaponry into the school. He, one time he tied me to the train tracks and the police caught us and like, it, it's like when did this air? Not crazy. during like homeroom. No, no, it's like during a lunch study. Yeah. Oh, but like it, during school hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we did a couple of, we did one where he came to my, to Thanksgiving and I played my mom and he beat the crap out of my mom and threw her down the stairs. Oh my God. And then we did one where he, where he shot the Easter bunny. And that one was like, it was like an hour and 20 minutes. It was a, it was a full movie like where we did, yeah, it was crazy. And we were going to sell it. And then in the end, the, um, the TV production, uh, guy, uh, Mr. Subco. Mr. Subco. Yes. He said to us, if you don't sell it and you let us put it on the, um, the yearbook video at the end of the year, we'll give you, um, TV production scholarships. So he basically bribed us to, <laughs> to put it on the video at the end and not sell it ourselves. Did you get scholarships? We got scholarships. We oh. got 500 bucks a piece, I think. Oh, that, right. that was a man that could always see talent. Just saying. <laughs> I didn't know this guy. He was a great dude. Yeah. And look, look, that's what, that's essentially what started your that's career, what right? I mean, it. Absolutely. And I would sneak into the back of classrooms and kind of watch people watch it. It was great. Was, Isn't that the best, It's never man. been as good as that, to be honest with you. <laughs> I've never felt as good writing and Come creating on. something since then. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was pure. It was pure. Were you ter- like, were you terrified in WWE that they weren't weren't going to like it? Like cuz I think you spoke to this last time you were in a room it was just you and Triple H and his wife and Vince. And Vince. Yeah, it was me and the McMahon family sometimes. And you ha- you have to just agree. You can't go against Oh, yeah, that. what am I going to say? <laughs> yeah. I know and people would say like, "Oh, you know, you have to tell Vince if you think he's wrong." I'm like, "How am I going to tell Vince that he's wrong about wrestling?" I mean, really? Yeah. Like I know better than he does about wrestling? It was strange. Very did you strange. did you, did you write it down to the the, the part where it'd be like, all right, and then you say, just using this, yes, brother. Like, like, it, <laughs> yeah. like did it, it down to like the... Pretty much, and, yeah. You'd write it like a script. And you ever, yeah. did you ever, I'm sure you wrote stuff for The Rock? I did well. not. Rock had his own personal writer, ah. Brian Gortz, who now kind of runs his production company oh, wow. and was the head writer before me, um, then stayed on to kind of just be The Rock's guy. Yeah, I guess when you get that level yeah. of your own writer. <laughs> yeah. I can see you in the back, like, kicking the table, like, Triple H is going off script again! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, then, like, yelling at him. Like, you know, like, pointing off to The him. Dudley boys? Say Dudley it Brothers. as written. <laughs> <laughs> no improv <laughs> Oh, it's so good. We had um, Alex Abrahantes on the show as well, who I tried. This was such a crazy, like, twist of fate. I don't know if you remember, but uh, Alex... Followed you to followed. He was after you at Guiding Light, or no? You were the last one to write there. He was a soap opera writer. Then, you, then he, didn't he write for the WWE after Dave left? Like he was like fo- oh, chasing really? your life, really. You know, and he's coming in right here after me tonight. <laughs> yeah, right. No, but, but he, no, he was here before he was you. Here a couple months no, ago. So he's finally caught up. You, you yeah. totally caught up. I don't know if you know this now, but Dave, but I'm also a professional wrestler, a lucha libre wrestler. I heard that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I saw you at the lucha libre. Yes, I brought my Alex, sons. Yes, and Alex. Was he? He's the writer for that and the owner of oh, that organization. Right. Yes, yes, I know. And you two were like sitting next to each other and didn't know. And I wanted to. I came up to. I think you went up to try to connect the two, and the yeah, security went. stopped us. Oh, really? really? Yeah. At House of Independence, <laughs> of all places. Oh, come on. Prior to our show, yeah, we were though. sitting yeah. in the front Prior row at, at the Lucha Libre yeah. show. Now, yeah, royalty, right? Yeah, now. <laughs> I think we all are. My kids were very confused by it. Why? Uh, well, I the, think they were raised on WWE, mm-hmm. and they couldn't figure out. They had the small ring, and they were they they just couldn't exactly figure out what was going on. They're like, why is there masks? Yes, <laughs> it's a whole different thing, right? It's a, yeah, it's a whole different. It was, it was great though. I got to tell you, man, when I went, I went off the middle rope because there's three ropes on that little tiny gym, mm-hmm. and I they're like during rehearsal. Spoiler alert! It's not real. <laughs> they they were like, go ahead, try to Jay go Fabe. up. I was I was like, I want to go up to the top. And they're like, you sure you want to go up to the top, man? I'm like, yeah, I totally want to go up there. And we worked it in where, because you know I'm like 41, fat and out of shape now. So I was like, I don't want to get. Nobody wanted me to get hurt. So the guy was enormous. What was his name? It was uh, so the was guy that our, was here. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, Francis Damien. The 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 the, yeah. the, the wall or something. Remember, no, no, because remember. His name was Francis Damien. He's the priest guy, yeah. the, the satanic yeah. priest. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, he came out and blessed everybody yes. and called them whores. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You were sitting right next great. to him. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's, you saw how big he is. So yeah. the whole joke was that I, he, I would go off the top rope and he would catch me because mm-hmm. I'm a, a little person, right? Yes. Like right. Derek, Derek's family. I don't, know if, I don't know if you've seen them, but they're, <laughs> yeah, you're, they're like you're, I'm like six five. You're so, so tall. So uh, I go up We're to all the, tall here. Yeah. yeah. Right? I go to the top rope and I was like, this guy, this isn't going to happen. So I went off to the, the middle rope and it was still kind of like intimidating. And the, the, the cage was on the stage, which makes you feel like you're even higher looking out at the audience. Yeah. You know what I mean? So in other words, you were scared. Terrified. Yeah. <laughs> to the entire time. 
It felt like four days. The whole thing <laughs> took like three three seconds. So I was actually doing. Thanks for coming, by the way. I was at a wedding. Yeah, I was in a wedding. So, <laughs> so you're not going to be doing the Mick Foley dive off of the top of Hell in the no. Cell anytime soon. No, that's crazy. Those like guys are insane. In you had to see some crazy shit. Like when they come back in, yeah, after a match. I mean, are they just torn apart? They gotta be. They are. Yeah. I mean, I think the adrenaline is still going, so they don't probably feel it until they really sit down in the locker room. Did you write a lot of stuff for Mankind, Mick Foley? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. He came back a few times. Cause he was beast, man. Like wasn't the most in shape guy, but boy, no, he's just fearless. Yeah. Absolutely fearless. Did you have favorites to write for? Yeah, I loved CM Punk was one of the guys at the time. Daniel Bryan was a big story that we did back then. Um, yeah, it's fun to write for those guys. Any anybody that was difficult to write for, just character wise, or well, I'm not talking about like personality, like Vince McMahon. Wanna... Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, certain guys just do their own thing. John Cena does his own thing. You know, so there's not really any reason to write for him. You give him sort of a suggestion, and then he kind of just does his John Cena thing. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there, there definitely is that aspect of it. Like when you have your character down that you developed and right. you know, you know. You don't want some guy from soap opera world coming and telling you what to say. <laughs> I went to a um a, a benefit for a friend years ago and it was a it was a an, an auction. You, you buy tickets for and then you put stuff in and people donate stuff. So I was throwing, you know, I liked it, WWE growing up and I wasn't a huge fan, but there was stuff. There was like NFL stuff and NHL stuff, like Ranger ticket, all kinds of stuff. And I was just dumping tickets, dumping tickets, and all this stuff. And I had one ticket left, and I threw it in the WWE bin. And lo and behold, I won the WWE. One ticket I put in it, and I won it. <laughs> and I was like, ah, it was like a gift basket, and it was like a lunchbox, and there were two tickets in it to an event, I think, at the Prudential Center. And I and I couldn't make it, so I gave I gave it I gave it away. Um, the person calls me up. They're like, oh, my God, thank you so much. This was so amazing. I'm like, what you, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Like, They're like, no, you have no idea. They like John Cena came out. First of all, they sat them right at the entrance to yep. the ring where the flames and shit shoot off. Yeah. And then John Cena came out after his match and brought us back into the room and took pictures with us and introduced us to everybody. The woman who donated, you, I don't know her name, but whoever donated it, it's a local girl mm -hmm. who works in the offices of WWE, and they gave like the... Like the gold oh, package, you know, and of course I didn't go. Oh, but that might have been sucker. like an amazing experience. It might have been your man. big break. You might have gotten discovered. Right? I, I wasn't a Lucha Libre uh, celeb. <laughs> yeah, <yet>. no. <laughs> I didn't wear a mask. I probably should have worn, worn a mask. mask. I should have yeah, worn I, a mask. I, I've never been to a WWE um, event. I would like to go. I think that'd be a lot of fun, like a SummerSlam or de definitely WrestleMania at some point. It's an interesting crowd, I'll say that. Oh, I'm sure. And all the signs and all the things they yell. Yeah. It's so it's it's, yeah. it's like that whole culture. Yeah. It's great. Will Trump go back to the WWE? I gotta tell you, I might. I can't I, probably. <laughs> Sweet. But Mike, let me just say. I'm an idiot. You're I, know, an idiot. I, get, yeah. I get it. You say you tell me every time. Well, you're an idiot. Well, Dave, you hear that? You hear that sound? I think we played this game with you once before. It's a game we like to call top or bottom. I'm gonna uh, read you two terms. You're gonna tell me if these two things were in a relationship, which one would be on the top, which one would be on the bottom, and we're gonna round table it. All right. Frankie, you're in. No, this is uh, guy-centric. What do you mean guy-centric? Huh. I'm looking at the first one right now, and it's definitely not. I hate you for writing this, by the way. And stop trying to blame me for your mistakes. I just cut the Frankie Egg, no, the uh, Chinese food episode today. And you're trying to blame me for your mistakes through the whole episode. I'm not. What mistakes? Oh, listen back, I everybody. Make, I don't make mistakes. <laughs> listen back. You just listened to it before this one, hopefully. Go ahead, you guys. Do this. No, you're in. Top, you're definitely in. Top or bottom, number one, Vanderpump Rules or Monday Night Football? I got to go with Monday Night Football. I, having worked in reality shows, I have a really hard time watching them because you talk about fake. Yeah. Those are really fake. Don't you dare. Sorry to, I'm sorry to don't break. Don't you dare. I'm sorry to break the news. I don't know what a Vanderpump is, so I'm why, well, go why did you put it on there? Monday night. Football. Why did you put it on there? Because you tweeted it this week, and I figured <sighs> I would bring our social media into our episode. I know it's a terrible reality show, and they're all you, dumb. Uh, Monday night football on top, on top of everything. <sighs> I'm Monday night football on top of every reality show ever. Are you serial? Well, I wouldn't go that far. Well, yeah. mine is like the good ones that are like pe people like doing their talents and stuff. It, it started with me. Actually, no, I'd still go Monday night football. Live <laughs> tweeting <laughs> Bachelor in Paradise. I felt like I needed to share with the world what I was experiencing. Please tell me you watched. I do watch Bachelor in Paradise. Is it not the greatest editing you've Sucks ever in. seen on any television show? It's pretty good editing. It's just, just the opening credits alone are worth watching. <laughs> it's amazing. It's the greatest opening credits in the history of television. <laughs> so I don't really? know if other people... Oh, my God, man. Like, I've never seen it. Ever. What? After all of the, the live tweeting, well, you've never over. watched it? I think it was over. You uh, need to watch next... I'm, I, I, please, so we can, can talk about it. Can I Netflix it? 
No, it's no, not one of those. No, no, no. You don't want to Netflix it. I can't watch DVR, it. DVR it so it records next season. Um, Just Google drunk, disgusting people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, first and we'll venereal be, diseases. First yeah. Jersey Shore will come up. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. So I, what I started to do, and I don't know if people do this, man, but I started the two-screen experience. I started to get that saying from The Walking Dead, mm -hmm. and I never did the two-screen experience with them because that's on their website, and they're kind of giving you backstory to things that are happening right. in the show. I don't want that. I want... The, the momos of America, you know, to I want to see what they're saying. So I started following the hashtags on Bachelor in Paradise, and that's why I felt like it was my American uh, responsibility to start. It's like a town hall. Tweeting it. Yeah. Yes. So then I, it, that ended. I had to continue this, and <laughs> Vanderpump Rules was my. Vanderpump Rules is the next one? Pump, you, hashtag Pump Rules. All right. You I watch mean, you, that show? Yes, and you got to read the tweets. Just read just read. So you're going Vanderpump Rules over Monday Night Football? Yes. Monday Night Football is dead, as is the NFL. Please. That guy, whatever his name is, what, the guy that's should a, be opposite Mike ostracized. Op opposite, uh, um, not Mike Trigo. Uh, Chucky, yes. He's ruined the sport. <laughs> he's a robot. Have you listened? This he's so boring. He puts me to sleep. <laughs> like, <laughs> want, I love to. Re well, Gruden keeps it the energy up. He's great. You want Dennis Miller back? No, I would I, take I Dennis Tariqo Miller back. over this guy. I want Frank Allen Dan. Although Frank's dead, too soon. No, it's I no. get it. I, I, Just I, right. Dan Deerdorf was great, and yeah, those guys were great. But I think. Uh, I, I I love Gruden and I love Tariko. I like Tariko too. What happened with him? Contracts? What? No, NBC offered him a great deal to just do an intro and halftime for NBC. That's it. Oh, that's that's easy. Yeah. He got I a mean, do you kid. disagree with me that this guy's destroyed? We don't even know his name, right? Three guys that probably watch football and one lady, and none of us know his name. That's how terrible he is. That kind of, it's his first year. Even though you hated Dennis Miller or you, you knew who it was Dennis Miller. Like, how did he get the gig? Like, you know, I, I'm not against the guy. Like, Good for him and everything, but it's it's kind of robot-y. He's terrible. He's I'm, I, you opposite know, I don't of color. I want to reiterate myself again, but he's not the it, color so. guy. That's why Vanderpump Rules is on top. No, I mean Lala. Come on, you're gonna put this guy up against Lala? You don't I have no know, idea who, you Lala don't know who Lala is. is. You want a wall of Lalas? That's what you want. Uh, no, you believe me, you want a wall of Lalas. <sighs> Google, Terrible. Google it. Taking every job away from actors. Top or bottom number two? Uh, <laughs> Times Man of the Year or People's Sexiest Man Alive? Are you, so that's Trump versus Rock? Is that what you're yeah. saying? That's hard no, to I'm make saying, would you rather be? Oh, oh, oh. would you rather be? T chosen what are you, as Dennis time, the intern now? Dennis! Times Man of the Year. Which is me. Being it's chosen me. Okay. as that or People's Sexiest Man Alive. You can't be both? Yeah, why can't you be both? I guess you could, but that's really not the question. Not in this. I think you could the Rock be, should be both. but one has to be on top. Yeah, that's true. And one has to be on know, the bottom. I don't know. I saw this, that last movie he did with uh, Kevin Hart. I don't, I don't, where, seen was that fat, yet. where was Fat Robbie? Oh, yeah. This is not it about was, them, though. This is about it's a you. ride along. Oh, it's about you. No. Wh whether you'd rather win. Which one would you? Fat Robbie was really bad. I uh, yeah, that's pretty bad. What was the name of it? No, it was one with, with Kevin Hart. They were both in it, but it, what was it called? Oh, uh, something ride. ride. No, it was not the. It's not uh, security. No, it's not ride along. Yeah, it's, it's like I think it. I think what. Sydney Lesperance, our fact no, checker. That's easy, fact it's checker. easy to look up. Well, it, I mean, we have a producer sitting right there. I feel like it's ride something. She's always on the microphone. She should be typing. She's typing right now. <laughs> She's so mad right now. Look it up, Frank. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Answer the question. Top it's not bottom. my turn. It's, D it's, oh, it's my turn. turn? Okay. Uh, I definitely go with a Sexiest Man Alive because you can win Man of the Year for, for being Hitler, I think. Uh, there's what? only one. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, one, of the, that's one of the categories <laughs> for being Hitler. No, you can win Man of the Year for doing something terrible. Okay. You can only win Sexiest Man of the Who, Year for being give me an example. purely sexy. Who's who's won Man of the Year for being terrible? Are you, Donald don't, Trump. He's not terrible. He's not good. You don't know that yet. No. Are you one? Of, you're one. Of, you're one of them. Well, I might be. <laughs> it's a short list of three now. Can I say the list? Or are you going to make me cut it out? What's a short list of three? I've lost a friend. Uh, a, a friend of the show too. I've lost a friend over this. See, that's dumb. You won't lose me. But I do live in Maplewood, New Jersey, which <laughs> I believe was something like 98% for Hillary. Yeah. We're very progressive there. But bottom line is... You want to be sexy. I want to be sexy. Yeah. Good choice. Oh, are you going? I'm not answering this one. Uh, yeah. People's sexiest man alive. Why, what, what, you want that, that I feel like I mean, gets more, even more... Uh, you can't earn money off of being the man of the year, <laughs> but you can definitely earn money off of being the sexiest and, man and alive. It, obviously, it's all subjective, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that that's good. That's a lot of publicity. I don't. I don't want to be sexiest man of the year. I feel that's too much responsibility. I don't think you have to worry about it's that. It's man alive. <laughs> sexiest man well alive. 
I don't want to be that. Sorry, I don't want to be that guy. Sixty percent. Uh, it's so much responsibility to be that sexy. Yeah, it's it, you're just. Vo- it's not even that you're. I mean, you could not even be that sexy. It's just that. No, if you're sexiest man, I think you're voted alive. on multiple things. I wonder which one sells more issues. Probably people's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sydney definitely. should check that too, but probably plus time people, is right? owned by Time Inc. And we don't. Fuck Time Inc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he used to be on the show that Time Inc. bought and canceled. We love it. <laughs> uh, just uh, you know what Time. Man of the year. That's <laughs> no, on top. Here. On top. <laughs> top and bottom number three. Middle school age or oh, middle school age self or middle aged self. Well, I definitely I would go middle school self. I I think I uh, probably peaked in eighth grade. First of all, I was at my full height. <laughs> Physi- and, you're talking about physically. You were already yeah. The same like time. if you look at bar mitzvah pictures, I'm in the back row, and then little by little. That doesn't happen anymore. I haven't been in a back row in a long time. <laughs> so, so eighth grade was pretty good for me. What about you? No, I'm not in. You got to. Oh. What do you? What do you mean you're not in this? Okay, I think middle aged self. Middle aged self. Yeah, I'm not middle aged. So, uh, oh boy. what do you mean? You Ugh. could you could die at 55. You're definitely middle aged. <laughs> You I, think you're, I think you're middle aged. Something. Man. What do you mean? I'm not middle aged. Well, well, what is the definition of middle aged? Middle aged forty. <laughs> why are you looking at me when you say that? <laughs> Every, everybody in the room but you is over forty. More or less. Right, but I thought that's what it was. No. No. Well, it's I mean, middle, middle school age self. I mean, I, I had I had fun, but I wasn't like kissing any girls or anything because I wasn't getting any. Uh, so I guess middle aged. <laughs> What? You're kissing like, middle. Like, I just love where you're kissing middle school like, girls now. <laughs> I was, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> His whole mindset Explain revolves around like which who he's hooking up with. Like that's what you base this. On. Well, no, I'm just thinking of my middle uh, middle school age self was great. I was playing sports and video games and and wearing sweatpants and tight sweats. That sounds like today for me. <laughs> <laughs> today I'm going to play hockey after this podcast, and I played a Should GTA, it be middle GTA school age self or twenties. Came here, <laughs> and everyone would say twenties. All right. But what I guess middle aged self, even though I don't think I'm middle aged. I think I think middle aged self. Like you gotta love who you are now. I think I would answer that question whoever I was now at the time you asked me it. That's I'll answer it in a say. bunch of years. You know? I mean I'm balder every time you ask me it, but hey, bald is beautiful. On some people. somebody posted up, and I'm not gonna say who it was, but somebody posted up one of the eighty eight percent said they wanted to see more videos so they could look at Derek's beautiful face. Sweet. That's sweet of them. It was, was it sweet Amy? Of them. <laughs> it was not Amy Skaggs. I believe it was Sydney Les Brown say. Ching. Hey, Sydney Les Brown say. Ching. Fact check it. <laughs> yeah, did you did you say that? <laughs> Le- yeah. That's that's really not going to be a hard one for you. Top or bottom number four, producing pot. Let me say this: writing for podcasting or writing for television. I would say I'd say writing for television only because uh, it's easier in a lot of ways. Writing for writing for audio is a real learning curve of you know all the things like you just take for granted like oh look we're in a room you have to actually describe <laughs> what the room is like and yeah. try to make it sound like people aren't saying oh look in a room we're in a room right. we always yeah. describe these scenes of like hey look what I have in my hands um, and try to avoid that at, at all costs but uh, but those things have to happen whereas in a TV show you just get to actually show it hmm it's interesting. Yeah, that is. I mean, obviously, I've never written for television, but I, I agree that writing for podcasting is difficult. You know, this is more not scripted, but there is a script. I believe you have <laughs> written for television. <laughs> well, you just don't realize it. I mean, yeah. it hasn't been on TV, but you were writing for television. Yeah. Um, hmm. So I would say writing for television on top. Uh, yeah, I think um, I think writing for television. On top as well. I mean, I think because I think in our podcast, I think a, uh, what we're saying and stuff, we play games and everything, but a lot of it's just improv. For you, because you're not the one writing the script ever. Well, this isn't really a script. This is a uh, this is an outline. Oh, you're gonna be people about don't to get realize burned. that every no, is, is single this word a, of this podcast is scripted. Every single yeah, one. Yeah. Of them. We're very right. good actors. Yeah. I'm saying you're really yeah. natural. That's what I'm saying. No, th- <laughs> this is an outline which is awesomely done, and we go by it, but it's not <laughs> right. See the thank fire? you, Frankie. You see the fire in her eyes right no. now. She's gonna attack you. No, but and there's the teleprompter, of course. Yeah, that we have right over there. <laughs> Wait, do you get Frankie? This is a script. No, I I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Frankie, you're, hate me you're, right you're, now. Did you hear that gasp? <laughs> there was more behind that. It's just all crazy make em ups. <laughs> There's more behind that. Stop watching my every Twitch. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say, uh, ugh, I don't know. I I don't I don't know when we 
collaborate on a script, what is more, I guess, more enjoyable for me? I guess that's where I'll go. I think the, uh, I, th I, I don't know. This is easy now. In a sense, right? So he's the doing it? Yeah. So I think the creativity of starting something new as what you're doing right now, I would put on top, right? I think the beginning is, is always kick ass because it's harder. You're, you're like really spinning your wheels on it. And then over time, it becomes easy like anything else. And so, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say, well, you know, I'm going to answer it. The Dep new, whatever's new. I like <laughs> both, but whatever's new. Yeah. You disagree with I, that? I think when you do something for a long time, it's. Sometimes that's when it gets, becomes difficult because you've done it so often. Oh, like to come up with new fresh. content, yeah. something mm -hmm. fresh, right? Exactly. Like, you know, something that you got to come up with to give you guys talking points that you have not already said. Yeah, it's not yeah, easy I to do. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, well, like top, but we're that's topical. how we end up with Vanderpump Rules because that's what <laughs> top, top <laughs> that's now, But that's that's an know? amazing top or bottom for this table. You know what I mean? I think that's great. Yeah, it just takes it takes doesn't just roll off the tongue. Is all I'm saying. It become, it's a little bit of a challenge. Which is why you were insulted when Derek said that this isn't a script. This is no big deal. <laughs> you just do, brought a full circle. Did I, didn't say this was no, <laughs> I didn't say this was no big deal. I said it's you not a script. You basically said that she, there's, she has no What's the sound effect here? for... Wait, wait a second. So I did not I can say, quit and it will be no, no big deal. No, no, no. I, I, I did not say this was no... Did I That's say no big deal? Did those Christmas. words come out of my mouth? Did I say no big deal? Did that come out of my mouth? I said it's improv around an outline. Moving on. That Frankie so eloquently. He's prepared. pitting us against each other. It's so, it's so weird. <laughs> just doesn't it's, want it's the so anger weird. Do you hear Derek? Derek, get out of that hole you just put yourself in. <laughs> I'm trying. It's too deep. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes the effects are fun. Top, nice. or, <laughs> top or bottom number five. Knowing all the answers or ignorance is bliss. <laughs> I think I have to go with knowing all the answers is top. Although there are moments where I just think, oh, it'd be so nice to not know anything and not care. I've seen a lot of that recently. I'm like, I'd like to be that guy. Like every reality show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, they don't know what they don't know. Wouldn't right. that be great? So the problem is I don't, that I know what I don't know. And that bothers me, hmm. you know? Right. Feeling lost. But I, I see people walking around every day that seem to be just, just totally fine with the fact that they don't know anything that's going on. <laughs> the world's on a level. They people. don't know. Yeah. That they don't know. Sheeple, right. man. But I think, you know. Sheeple. But the part of this came um, from the finale of Mars Patel, just that they had, you know, the, the character had to make that choice. That is whether true. to, you can know everything. Yes. But then you know everything and, you know, everything changes. Yes. And you can never go home again. Right. And then the whole, or, you know. Well, it's the, the it's question of the Matrix. You know, do you want to go back into the Matrix and you'll forget all this ever happened? Or do you want to take the pill and learn the horrible truth? Which, which color is the pill that he chooses? Hmm. Do, do you find it, uh, do you think there's any connection that it's a blue and a red pill? I never thought about that before. Connection of what? Does he choose the blue P pill? Po politics. Oh, I forget which uh, one. Uh, I was going to say blue, I, I but I, I can't remember either. But blue pops into my head. Uh, well, would, well, if he took the blue pill, that means that's the horrible truth. Just saying. Hmm. Deep. I know. <laughs> Deep. I think I've always been the type of person who wants to know all the answers, but I, I don't know. I don't think it's all it's cracked up to be. I think I'd rather just be one of those people that is so cent centric on, I don't know, less important things. And they just seem so much happier, <laughs> lighter, l less stressed. For real, dude. Sorry. <laughs> For real. Uh, now, I, listen, <laughs> time did, maybe time did the right thing. <laughs> That's probably a stupid telemarketer. I would prank them if they, if that was actually a person on their line. Should I answer it? No, you should answer the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, knowing all the answers or ignorance, or, yeah, I think it'd be great. Do you mean like you would actually literally know all the answers mm -hmm. to everything? Mm -hmm. Like you'd be like yes. a genius and know all the answers. Yes. Yeah, I'd probably go ignorance is bliss. Like, I mean, I, just to, I mean, I feel like I know a lot about the industry, but I, I, I don't want to know all the answers yeah, to no. everything. Like the the answers of the world, like. Yeah, I don't want to know that. Nah. That's on the bottom. Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one because to say you ignorance is bliss, like to say you want to have that is ignorant in itself. And it's yeah, like, that's but a, but like sometimes, man, I everybody can't be a leader, and everybody can't kind of like if everybody knew everything, we would just be in complete war all the time. You need people to like walk around with blinders on and watch Vanderpump Rules and WWE right. and Fastlane Daily. You know, oh sorry, wrong. What's it called now? <laughs> Nothing yet. Um, so, I think ignorance is bliss on top. Or I guess is that the wrong answer? 
I feel like I should have to say I want to know everything. But we answer, we asked that. You asked that, or Dennis asked the question last episode. Um, if you could go back in time and see how Beginning it all began, of time oh. or the end of time, yeah. right? Which one, one would you do? How would you answer it that way? I would choose the beginning for that. That's what I said. Yeah. You want to know, like... Yeah, I don't want to know how to... I don't, like, if someone said to me... That's, that's one thing I don't want to... If someone said, oh, I can tell you how you're going to die, that I would not want to know. Hmm. Yeah, because that just, would just be in the back of your head constantly. It would be terrible. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. And but, you don't know when, maybe. Like, you're just told... It would definitely how. change how you live your life, yeah. I bet. Yeah. Unless they said you have 70 more years to go. Yeah. And just, oh, then I got plenty of time. Did, did you feel... <clears throat> do you feel like getting into the podcast game... Did you feel like you were ignorant when you first got into it? You know, like, or, or did you feel like you had a good grasp as to what was going on? No, I mean, I was a, an avid listener. I listened to a lot of podcasts, but I really had no idea about the business at all. How anybody monetizes um, numbers, what kind of numbers people are getting. I really had no idea about that. You know, it's not like, it's not like TV shows where the ratings are posted. You know, you, have, you kind of have an idea of what maybe, you know, some of the top ones are, but you never really know what those numbers mean. Hmm. Yeah, all of those things you just said, I still think that, that nobody knows the real question. Right. To it, you know? And some of that is on purpose. I think people don't really want you to know in a lot of ways. It's it's it, there's it's such an it's such an old but new you know, medium. Yeah, because now it's like not, nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, because now it's not you know, back then it was turn on the radio and listen to it at this time. Now it's you know, there's a podcast for everything. Everything. Yeah. And be, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say and there's sort of the curse or the blessing of the fact that everybody can do it because it's yeah. great that we all have access. We can create things on our own and put them out there and you don't need a studio. On the other hand, there's a lot of jack-offs doing terrible there, podcasts. Right. There's a lot of bad. putting really bad stuff out there. It, clog, it clogs up uh, you know, all, the, all the good content. It's harder to find yeah, things. It is. Cream, thing cream always rises to the top, but it is. It's difficult. And we said that in the beginning that, that we realized, right, this was a medium that was just a exploding and everybody was doing it and and there were terrible things out there and hopefully somehow yeah. there would be some sort of funneling process eventually there is and, there is and you would be able to weed through a well, lot of that i also think it's like a war of attrition because if you, we've been doing it for so long now that think about everybody that we connected with throughout our time doing this half of them aren't around anymore you know what i mean so like you're right like Everybody can get on their phone and do a podcast in their basement, but they don't do it. They're, it's consistently not there. They're, they're either got bored with it or didn't work out. I oh, mean, like other podcast get, people. Yes. Other podcast shows. Yeah. I see. Other shows. Oh. Sorry. I don't. Like their release is not consistent. Or they're just gone now. They just, they tried it and it didn't work because they, you know. And you snuffed them out. Mm -hmm. You know. And consistency is a big thing too. Like consistent, you know, and, and quality. 100%. Stuff. I mean, that's something that we always prided our show on that we always launched when we were supposed to mm -hmm. you know yeah. i mean you you turn on the you turn on uh wpix 11 at 11 o'clock at night and you expect seinfeld to be on you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i think consistency besides just your release schedule the the structure i think people get very comfortable like scripted first of all i think it's i think what what is helping to identify better you know the, which shows are better than others is the different genres. So you kind of, now you, you're categorizing the shows. But then in addition to that, that even a show like ours, which is not exactly scripted, people um, look for top or bottom. They look for certain segments. If you if you just sat down and, and each week or each month, whatever with whatever regularity you recorded and we're all over the place, people can't, they don't, they don't, um, What's the word I'm looking for? They don't like uh, connect to something that they look for. Yeah, and they want a continuity between each episode. Yeah, you know? yeah our listeners will tweet. You know, oh, I can't wait till Monday. Or I need, I need my show on Monday. Blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, and I love that, and we do give it to them. And even big shows, though, I found don't really live up to that. Like Serial, the second season of Serial, they stopped releasing that. Sh I to they totally lost me as a listener. I didn't even finish it. Me too. But they stopped me listening, too. or list. They started. They stopped publishing in a consistent fashion. All of a sudden, it was like they were skipping weeks, or right? Yeah, she at some point midway through the season said, "Oh, it's going to be a, every two weeks instead of every week." Right. Yeah, yeah, I was out. We had her on, and she was a great. She was a great guest. Um, no, well, we had Robbie Ashadri. Yeah, on. we. She. Oh, right, 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 right. She was an undisclosed podcast, yeah. but she helped create yeah. the original. Yeah, she was. Uh, she's friends with Adnan Syed. Right. Or his attorney. Is he something. out? What happened? I don't know if he's out. We he's getting a retrial. Right. Yeah. 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 Did you listen to season one? I did. Yeah, Epic, I loved right? season one. Yeah, that was great. So, do you think? Do you think it was the story or the way that they put it out that lost listenership? The second one. Yeah, I think it was more the story than anything else. Yeah, 
because I think I would have still stuck with it, but I just it didn't grip me the way the first season did. No. Yeah, the first season. Did you finish great. season two? I don't think so. And you didn't listen. No. So th- you know, three out of the four people, one not listening, the other three didn't finish it, and that's that's telling in itself. So yeah. it's not easy to. It's it, what? Do, all right. Here's a question: Is it harder to get a new listener or to retain that listener? Hmm. I think getting new listeners. Is yeah, harder, is I probably agree with that. Yeah, because because it, like you said, the consistency and the connection is such a is such a big thing. It's such an intimate medium. You know, you, you put it right in your ears. Mm-hmm. You know, going through your day and stuff. And I think once once it becomes a habit, people don't want to let it go. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to add a new habit to it. Mm. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? The listeners? It, it, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. I mean, just back to our last conversation, uh, just what we were saying a few minutes ago, you know, you feel like you have consistency, you feel like your listeners tweet at you, but I still always feel like it's not good enough. Like, we don't, mm-hmm. we're not reaching a big enough audience. We have not connected with enough people. We're, you know, and I see, you know, in- increase in numbers and things like that. And th- so there's positive data, but it still feels like. Yeah, but see, that, I, I, would, I don't know why that is. Like, I don't, like look, you're saying, the connection. Because well, you're always is, waiting for that one moment where it's going to explode. And I don't yeah. think that really, unless you're cereal, which is kind of right. a unicorn in right. the industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the most part, it's it's a slow build, and you know there's not one moment where you go, oh, hey, we got our front page of the Times, and now suddenly a million extra right. subscribers are here. But analytically, you do see like there is information there. Like we just looked at uh, the analytics um, at the beginning of December, and t- this kind of a- talks to this question. We noticed that before we released one episode in December. Our numbers in December were enormous, meaning the all new listeners. For us, for us, you know. For yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they were good, great numbers, but you know, I hate. <laughs> no, I don't want. I don't want to talk numbers, but I'm. What I'm pointing out is that we didn't even release a new episode, so everybody that was downloading I mean, was an old, was a new listener, right? But I don't know if that translates to the end of the end of the month with the latest episode. Right, there were if new you kept downloads it. on old episodes, we hadn't released anything yet. So, you know, right. I thought we're that's why it caught my eye. It's not like we dots. went back and did like a study on it. We just hadn't released anything yet in December. And mm-hmm. I look, I happened to look and I was like, wow, that's interesting. You know, so and, new listeners were coming. Right. And the so, iTunes charts are, are bizarre. You know, if you've seen, you can't, it, there's no it's, it's really weird formula and it's all you know new listeners count more than old listeners and it's it's you know we were really excited because our our first couple of weeks out we shot to the top of the iTunes chart for kids because everybody was a new listener so we were like in the top 5 we're like we're going right to number 1 <laughs> and then you know little by little we just started even as our numbers went up we went we dropped, dropped more and more list. in the yeah. list and we're still hovering you know we go we during the season we've gone back and forth between you know, from 15 to 50 or 60 or something like that, mm-hmm. which is great. And I'm sure great. you're on News and Noteworthy. Uh, we, never, we never made New and Noteworthy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Which and is I think just, that, that has something to do with the reviews. Right? See, that's weird because we, we were always on, we'd always be on New and Noteworthy for whatever reason, but we were never shooting to, well, first of all, we're in the comedy genre, which right. is like, we're never getting to the top of that. Right. Um, but why would we get to new and noteworthy we, where you're in a top? We heard that there's f- basically one guy that decides what goes on new and noteworthy. Yeah, I feel like there's it's so many yeah. uh, was it algorithms or whatever. Is yeah. actually a person that's like, yeah. I think it's hmm. one guy because um, well, a couple of my partners went to this this little podcasting festival or something or a conference, and the guy was there and he just was sort of walking around and talking to people. The guy, yeah, and he just <laughs> picked he picked one. She didn't even meet this one guy, but he picked their kids show and put them in the new and noteworthy. It was like the number two. Um, icon there, and he, and he left it there for about a month, and they went from number two hundred and fifty in kids to number two in kids ranking. See, just and it was just completely arbitrary. Yeah. Huh. Now to move in and like to move in in that category, and we when we initially launched, we launched under uh, technology. Uh, we launched under technology, and um, some other rant. we were not in comedy it was technology and something else with the purpose of knowing that it's easier to move in those categories than it is in comedy yeah. which I, I mean does it matter though like if you look at the analytics through our back end we use libsyn i don't mm-hmm. know who you guys use for, for uh, blueberry I think. blueberry oh, yeah. so if you look at those analytics you could see who's using what platform to listen to your show itunes isn't even the, the main one no. so what does that even matter if you're on itunes's top Whatever you know what I mean, or does it matter? That's what I mean. It's such an unknown terrain, and and I wonder. I mean, you think it was like this when radio started, and I don't know TV started, uh, and I mean, or was that was that just so tied? Well, not radio, but I guess TV was just so tied to like 
advertising. Yeah, yeah I think at the beginning it wasn't even about packages. Yeah, it wasn't even about ratings so you much. You could kind of see who bought what, you yeah. know, who purchased what package of channels right. and things like that because they wanted to watch certain things. But all I know is radio is terrible, man. It is frustratingly terrible. The amount of commercials on regular radio. They have to be dying. Like every time you turn a channel on, it's it's commercials because they need all that time to promote and get <laughs> ad- advertising. Why is on. anyone still advertising there? Like they have to it's know crazy. that people are turning it off. Because they still get numbers. Fifty dollars, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably right. Cheap. Maybe, all right, you have maybe. you have a new car, and your car has the app in it, right? Right. So you can just listen to podcasts with a push of a button. Yeah, you, do you, are, do you Apple, find yourself listening? Apple CarPlay. Yeah, you could listen to that. You could listen to Pandora. I mean, music wise, you could do Pandora. You could do um, Spotify. Spotify, all that stuff. And you have, you know, you have uh, the podcast. Now you have satellite. Right so take that out of this equation. Do you ever put the radio on? No, because I on satellite. I'll if I do listen to Z100, it's on satellite anyway. What about you? Flipping back and forth in the car. It's satellite. All satellite radio. All satellite. Yeah. Yeah. I won't pay for satellite just because I'll use Pandora or Spotify. I mean, I used to have it, and I, I do you know, it, for it, came, it came for free yeah, for the first couple <laughs> months, you know. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I I loved it, but I just Pandora, Spotify. It's, we had it's funny. We had parents who were asking if we were going to release a, a a CD version of the podcast because hmm. if they really didn't know how to play podcasts in the car, they're like, "Ah, oh, we're going on a long road trip. Do you have a CD?" And then we started thinking about maybe we will like sell CDs out of our trunk. I just got a fight with my brother in law about this. Or what if you just down like have like here's the website for the podcast. There's a download link and you get all of it at once in MP3 format. Yeah, he came up to me and he was like, "Um, "I want to do the. I want to make a nice gift for people. I need thirty thirty. I have this file." of people singing, and I want to make 30 uh, CDs. Can you help me out? And I said, no. What is this, 1987? Would you want a VHS of it? I'm like, first of all, <laughs> you don't know 30 people that have CD players. Like, do you have access? You don't have one in your car. Well, you have one in the car. You have one cars, in your car? All cars still come with a CD really? player. Really? Yeah. It's it's the computers that don't come Maybe with Maybe I was just being a D then. Computers don't, don't come with CD uh, slots anymore. No, I, I said to him, I, I don't have do. a computer that has a CD-ROM burner. Like, I don't have that anymore. Yeah. But you can take that file. I'll, I'll happily upload it to YouTube for you, and you can share the link. And he, he would just kept getting madder. <laughs> he just kept getting mad. He's like, Where, how are they going to listen to it on YouTube? And I was like, I don't know, on their any device that they have attached to their body? You know, the phone, your iPad, your – come on. Yeah, right? and you could even yep, – I mean, you could get, like, little flash drives with, like, their names on it, and you could do that too. Yeah. Have you yeah. thought about that? Like, are you? What about YouTube? I mean, YouTube's the second largest search engine in the planet. We did, and we and our pilot is on YouTube, and we did kind of uh, we we tried to put a bunch of images on there, and then we found it distracting, so we ended up sort of just leaving our logo on, and uh, I don't think we've gotten any a whole lot of views on it, but but we we thought about that in the beginning. So you don't set your Blueberry, you don't set Blueberry to automatically go to YouTube. Not for That's YouTube, a, no, no, no. Is there a reason? No, I think we were trying. We we were sort of trying to get the iTunes numbers that we because right. we really saw an opportunity. Like for us, as you said, with the kids charts, you can move up and down. Yeah, so you don't want to cannibalize your own numbers. Yeah, and we thought that if we could, you know, be in the top five in kids, that that would make a big difference for so, just being able to sell. So you're only places. on iTunes. We're on iTunes. Stitcher. We we have about I think twenty five percent of our audience is Stitcher, but we're mostly iTunes. Any random. Any, like, there like, are some randoms, and that we have, you know, if you look in Blueberry, we've got, um, you know, I, I love looking at the the, the world view and seeing, you know, we've yeah. got, mm-hmm. you know, we've, yeah. where are your listeners? We've got seventy five in Finland. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like thirty percent of our listenership is in is in England. Is that right? Yeah, Al- almost half. That's crazy. We did. We were contacted by um, this uh, a digital radio station in England called Fun Kids. And they asked us if we could chop up the podcast into five to seven minute chunks, and they would air it every day at a certain time um, on the on the radio, like four o'clock every day. And we thought, oh, this could be great. What if all these kids are listening to five minutes every day? It didn't move our UK numbers at all. We spent hours cutting these shows into oh, these right. five minute chunks. Oh, so you take a fifteen minute? And we cut take it a fifteen down. minute, cut it into oh, chunks, add some extra, you know, narration on either side of it. And it, it, I mean, it made the show worse. And I don't know that anybody really listened. But like, you know, you throw things at the wall. You never know what's going to work. Exactly. Always, yeah. man. Yeah. Right. Always. That, that's my favorite saying. I shoot. I try to shoot a sizzle a year. Yeah. Um. You know, with just a bunch of guys I work in TV with, and I mean, we shoot the dumbest stuff, man. We we shot a. Uh, actually, I want to kind of re-edit it, but we shot. Uh, 
What's that? Sorry, I thought you were going to say donuts. That's what exactly. Oh. I was going to say Frankie helped produce this. We uh, we shot one um, where a guy goes around and he travels to different towns in the country and he goes to donut shops trying to find the best donut. And um, we wanted to turn it. We didn't end up turning it into a travel show, but the the whole thing was he was going to ride a, a ten speed around the country to these towns, burning off the donuts, and it was going to become sure. scientific, kind of like what you were talking about. Yeah, that's that's actually that's a good idea. Yeah, we shot that's it, exactly. and it, I don't know, it was okay. Who was on like, the bike? Who was the guy? Jeff Sellis, who's the director of photography for Impractical Jokers. <laughs> um, but we shot it. We shot at uh, Doco in Ocean, and then uh, Confections of a Rockstar and Purple, Purple Glaze. Glaze. And it, it looked. I mean, it, it looked right beautiful. We shot yeah. the shit out of it. Yeah. But it just. We actually haven't even finished pitching it yet. You know, it still has one more edit. If Logan would ever finish it, but I feel. I feel like there's way more donut shops out. Like there's not that many out here. L.A. is like covered, covered in, in pop up right? donut it's, shops, as compared to here. Like it's uh, like maybe. I, Maybe it's just a West Coast thing. I don't remember being in San Francisco. I don't remember seeing too many donuts. I think it's like an L.A. thing. It's like donuts. <laughs> Can't tell you the last time I went in and bought a donut that wasn't like from Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, we're more in the cupcake field, I think, on the East Coast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Melissa's cupcakes in the city. Those things are this big. They're so yeah. delicious. They're so good. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was like, you know, it's it sounds like a funny concept, but I think didn't didn't we end up getting like ca- capturing some tears at one point? Like it got oh my sense. god, man! <laughs> it like, we really did get some like good. It really good. He's, yeah, it was good. It was very good. Yeah, Jeff, and it did look beautiful. Jeff is a he's an awesome dude. He actually did uh, he did some guys are bigger than others, which was a, a film about lucha libre wrestling. Ironically enough, how would no one pick that up though? That yeah. seems like well, we haven't well, like, we like have I said, we haven't finished shopping it yet because we're waiting for the editor. Is he a bigger guy? Jeff? No, yeah. he, I was just gonna say we call him. Uh, he's the residential. He's the, our resident Ewok on set. He looks like a like an Ewok, but I love you, Jeff. But that's that's it'd be, it'd be okay. Just throwing this out there, it'd be more interesting if you had a bigger guy. And by the yeah. end, yeah, he was eating donuts, but he, but he rode also, his bike. Yeah, yeah no, that was yeah. Jeff, Jeff looks really great on camera. He's a very eccentric looking guy, hmm. um, and I, I thought it worked. I really thought it worked, and it just needs a couple tweaks, but. Um, when you're when you're out in Louisiana, Louisiana shooting terrible scripted shows about cops doing cold cases, uh, you tend to not be able to edit a sizzle reel for free. Mm, there it is. When you really want to break it down, you know. <laughs> but we we do a bunch of them, and uh, I, I love it because you can just really just come up with any idea, and you never know who, what's going to take, man. That's for sure. <laughs> Do you <laughs> like an Italian guy cooking Chinese food with authentic Chinese wives? Right, like tell them about that. <laughs> that was a sizzle. That got picked up or didn't get picked up? No, they're still shopping it. It. Uh, he was the host of a, a show about exactly what he just said. Yeah, it was like th- there's a big Chinese um, community in Long Island, and uh, that they f- they cook authentic Chinese food, very different than American Chinese food. And there's eight cuisines, and in those cuisines are sub cuisines. And I was going the, the, in the pilot. I go. And shop with the wife. I get all the get all the food. I'm in a pond, like ripping up these these roots and stuff. Like, and then I cook the meal with with uh, the wife, and then I sit down with the whole family, eat it, and talk about their culture and everything. And that sounds great. Yeah, it was actually it was it was very yeah, it was. fun and interesting. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, there were some things different. I think they should have done with the pilot, but or the sizzle. But uh, yeah, I think it's a good concept. The food was banging. Like sure. it tasted it's nothing. Good too. I thought this is. I saw it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You showed it to me. It tasted nothing like Chinese. I mean, Not it was like gourmet Chinese oh, food. Please don't bring up Chinese food. I'm eating the whole like shrimp shell and sure. all, and it's delicious. Just yeah. like biting the eyes, everything. I had a. I was having a conversation on on uh, set uh, with a couple of people who were all talking about different projects, and um, it, it came up like. It's important to continue to shoot these ideas, right, and to house them because, like you said about the guy who does new and noteworthy, there's also a guy in a network somewhere who decides what is hot and what is not. Yeah, and if you you have to have it in your pocket ready right. to do it, you what know what I mean. What we're really looking for right. is an Italian guy who cooks with Chinese people. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got that. <laughs> really? You, you know, know? like don't you say that. <laughs> yeah, impra- that's what, that's impractical jokers, that- right? Like it was the first. It wasn't. It wasn't the first. I don't want to say it was the first hidden camera show, but there of were that no kind, yeah, right? And there were n- there was nothing out like that. And it just somebody in a room was like, "We need a hidden camera show," and they were like, "Bang!" And that was that's that. And that hit, but know? it's also like we need a show similar. And then they probably got their minds blown by like the whole concept of it and all right. too. So yeah, Duck Dynasty hits, and then they want every network right. wants their Duck Dynasty. Exactly. Yeah, you have you've to be, got Hicks in your my back friend works. Pocket. That's it. <laughs> a couple friends that work on that show. They're like with those guys all the time. It's yeah. hilarious. What was the uh, uh, oh well yeah like Pawn Stars um, and uh, Hardcore Pawn and 
yeah, that comic all, book man. It's yeah. all the same show. It's yeah, just, all that came. Yeah, I worked on um, Lizard Lick Towing. There was a oh, whole bunch of those repo shows. Yeah, the guy with the blonde hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was a writer on that show. Was that my? That, that, that was in Miami, up. Florida. No, no, that's the one that's really set. It's up. in Lizard Lick, yeah. North Carolina. Because the okay, because the guy, same same producers. One of the guys I was talking to was writing on the other show. Yeah, and he was telling me all kinds the of the Miami stories. one's so the fake. Miami. Though. He said it they're was both, one hundred percent fake. One hundred percent to the point where they were getting shit from the city. Because they were doing things written that were li- illegal in reality. So, like, I guess there's a, he brought up a term called um, when what's the term when you pull a lot of cars but you can't get them back to the shop, so you stage staging. Yeah, staging. He, that's illegal. Right. So, can you describe staging? I don't even know if I remember anymore. I, I used to get notes because, I mean, the, the weird thing about this show they I, they brought me in and I thought, oh, this will be like a reality show where they bring me the footage and then I have to shape it into a story. And they were like, nope, you're gonna write the show. <laughs> and I said, do I have to like sign anything and say that, that, that I won't tell anybody? And they're like, nah, nobody cares. <laughs> so I mean, I was literally just coming up with a storyline for the season and then writing episodes and coming up with the craziest repos I could think of. You know, uh, oh, they're in a Civil War battlefield and then somebody's truck gets <laughs> repossessed in the middle of the reenactors. You know, whatever it was. <laughs> and know? they would shoot that. And then the barn catches on fire. And yeah, oh, they, they go so and shoot great. it. That, that, that's great. Like I saw a couple episodes of that and I was like, this is entertaining. But the Miami one, it was so outrageous. Yeah. Like yeah. so, you know, it was oh, fake. Yeah, it'd be like machine gun fights. Like stuff. one where really <laughs> fell like three stories. Like, it's yeah. like, like, and then was walking away it, yeah. it's it's out of control <laughs> the, the industry drives me nuts like i feel like we've produced so many good things and nothing gets bought right but wiener circle right. was on for like two seasons it, it, it's it's crazy seen wiener circle no I've no not i seen never wiener circle like yeah like this suit in a at a network is like yeah that's gonna hit which he's not a creative mind at mm-hmm. all he's just this a suit and you know he picks these he or she picks these random things and uh yeah they end up being Terrible or Vanderpump Rules, <laughs> which is on season forty-three. Don't you dare. You watch, watch your tongue. Um, I want to ask you this question before we wrap this up. Um, real world, yes. When when they bring out the first real world cast and the way seven people in the house, you know, was it t- Eric Nice from Ocean? Yeah, it was. We we went to the school with them. No no uh, no TV, no communication with the outside world, right? And it kind of progressed from there. Have you have you watched it lately? No, no, not not in a few years. I, I occasionally I'll watch the challenge, but I never. Really I love the it. challenge. Yeah, right? they're still yeah. on. Little Miz, yeah, right? Exactly. They're still on. The real world like is the real on world right now. Still... I'm watching it right now. I can't... You watch the real world I can't now? Not watch. I watch a lot of bad television. That's crazy. Yeah. I, no, I, I didn't even know it existed still. Well, my point was now there. Well, this one's called Bad Blood. So they, there's there's uh, seven people, and then they bring in seven people that they had issues with, and they put them <laughs> together, and they, you know they're looking for conflict. Jeez. But they allow them. Cellular devices. Oh, really? And there's a lot of like, just people staring at their phones, man. You know what I mean? Like that. What you see in society is like you're seeing that in the show, and I guess that's real. But what is like? How do you feel about that? Being a writer of reality shows and seeing like the progression of it, and I don't know. Does like they're using the social media aspect of it while the show's in progress, not after or before to promote, but like in the show, like. Yeah, I think that they've the producers have realized that those are kind of shows that people are doing what you did, what you described earlier, which is the the two screen thing, because it's not something that needs your undivided attention. Mm. You know, you're not trying to follow a, a plot. It's mm. all about the, you know, it's it's the new equivalent of yelling at the screen essentially, but you're yelling at the screen with, you know, your thousand friends that you have. Right. Um, <laughs> and so I think that is a big part of that's that. I think that's factoring into actually the storytelling. You know, they're looking for those moments that are going to make people react on social media, not just not just watch next week. Um, and there's a lot of ways. I think it's not all about rating. You know, ratings are so much smaller for all these shows now. But there's different ways of of monetizing. There's different ways of judging how connected your audience is to the show. You know, hmm. especially these cable shows where they're getting, I don't know, six hundred thousand viewers or something. And you go like, how could they survive? But it's not just about the advertising. It's not just about the show. They have this loyal viewership that is. You know, that's connecting with them in other ways. Mm. Yeah, because now, t- I mean, TV. You know, back in the day, six hundred thousand would be like, oh, that's terrible. You were getting canceled one hundred percent. But it's not like that now. And honestly, you know, um, I mean, Jimmy Fallon does great numbers, but James Corden, they do their huge numbers on YouTube. Like mainly, uh, mainly, you know, the uh, the late 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 show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't even think they they don't think they care about ratings at all. It's all about how many views they get for their bits. Yeah. 
Which I guess brings us to this uh, last question. That sound means uh, we're at the armchair futurist in the year 2050. What will your industry look like? Podcasting, television, however you want to tackle it. I think everything is on demand at all times, and I think it's right it's right in your head. I don't, I don't think there's devices. I think devices are connected to what we are, and I think anything you want to see at any time is, is there. Do you watch Black Mirror? I do watch Black Mirror. Did you see the one where the kid I've goes heard of it. To, the art, to be part of the game testing? Yes, yes. That's what you're talking about. That's what we're headed towards. What's Black Mirror? I think, you know, I have a friend of mine, um, his, uh, his dad is, is like the premier futurist in, in the world. He's the guy that kind of um, coined the whole the singularity and all of this stuff. And he's predicted more things than anybody in the world. He, he predicted, you know, 30 years ago, he, he predicted what our phones would be and the internet and all this stuff. And he talks about that he doesn't think that the future is going to be that robots are going to take over from us. He thinks that we will be integrated with the robots. Westworld. Are you yeah. talking about like, Ray, Ray Kurzweil? <laughs> yeah, Ray Kurzweil. Is yes. this who you're talking about? That's who I'm talking about, yes. You, you, oh, wow. I know his son, yeah. Wait, his, so his son, his son is a World War Z, right? No, Am no, that's the, that's Mel Brooks' son. I oh, think, sorry, you're right. Z. Yeah, but so, but so Ray Kurzweil, he believes that you know, uh, when it comes to medicine, when it comes to really anything, that we will find ways to enhance ourselves, and that we will essentially be the, we will be working with the robots. We will be the robots. Chips you know? in our. I love that you. Head. I talk about Ray Kurzweil all the time, and I just love the fact that you. you I'm listening to you talk, and I'm like. I, I love everything he says about the singularity and exponential growth and all, yeah. all of these things. And we are go like, we're going to be, it's Terminator, yeah, right? It's going to be Terminator, but he has a positive view of it, of it, that it's not going to be us versus the robots. Yeah. That we will see it coming, hopefully, early enough to know that we need to make ourselves smarter. It won't be Westworld? Hopefully it won't be, it won't be Westworld. Did you finish Westworld? I have not. I'm not caught up on Westworld. Oh, okay. Don't spoil it, please. I will not. Hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that there'll be something in our brains that make us smarter. Right. If you don't have, if you don't have, what does he contend? He says, if you don't, in the next five years, he said this years ago, but in the next five years, if you don't have technology embedded into your body, you won't be able to keep up with technology. That's right. That's terrifying, dude. Yeah. He also believes that we will be able to upload our consciousness onto you know onto the cloud essentially, which means you you'll live die. forever. You live forever, which is also a Black Mirror thing that. But Black Mirror is a series like Twilight Zone on Netflix. Uh, you need to watch. It's but all technology based, yeah. But upload your consciousness to the cloud. So, yeah, that's insane. So there's one episode of Black Mirror where this kid answers an ad. He goes to be in part of a, a video game. Long and short of it, they stick a thing in the back of his head. It's this entire episode where his mind is, he's in the game. Yeah. And all of these things are happening, and it, it's it's just twists and turns, and it's a good like hour movie. And then he dies at the well. Spoiler. Alert. Wait, is it a movie? Is it, it's well, one? it's a one hour episode or a half hour episode. Yeah, it's like an it's anthology. A, so each one is a new story. Oh, okay. So it's like a. Oh, you said so he dies at the end, and uh -huh. this is like all of these things happen to him. That and he flies home at the end, and he, he gets out of the contract he signed with this company, and all, and he gets home. Long and short of it is the whole experience. He dies in the game. He yeah. never actually left the chair, and the whole experience lasted 0. 0.43 seconds. Wow. You know what I mean? So it's like. Yeah. The, yeah. The, it's just terrifying. That's nuts. How it could actually be. Yeah. You know? I don't know. It's it's some incredible stuff. Where are you at in Westworld? I'm only two in. I think. Oh. Yeah, I know. I really got... You're not even up. watching the same show. No, I know, I know. Not even watching the same show. I remember that first episode I saw, I'm like, this is a Western? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> The exactly. first episode. But no, it's great. I watched the finale last night. What were the... You liked it? Yeah, did you see it? No, I didn't finish it yet It's either. just like... But it's like... I mean, the whole show I'm talking about, Westworld in general, it's just like, you have to pay attention. Did it's you not like, think, oh though, it, did you not think it jumped a shark when the aliens come down and then Godzilla smashes How the, dare you. the... A little <laughs> bit. <laughs> a little bit. And then the, the guy was like, the plane boss, the plane that brought yeah, him back. so weird, weird that they did that. Why yeah. was Fonzarelli there? I don't know. It's hey. supposed to be West, the Westworld. <laughs> Western? Uh, oh, yeah, right. Thank you so much for coming out, man. Uh, is, there, is there anything you want to plug on the way out? Yeah, if people would just go and uh, subscribe to the the uh, unexplainable disappearance of Mars Patel wherever you get your podcast. Frankie, that's it. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. You know the old faithful, DerekD.com. Just go there and uh, follow me on social media. I would love the PBR posse to uh, to go to Dave's um, podcast and write a review. That subscribe, yeah, write a awesome. review, especially if you have kids. Your right? kids will love it, and you will too. PBR Podcast, you can find us on the web, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram us. Give us some love, and we would love you back. Dave Crosby, thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for having me. See you.